if it goes. Pretty sure it is. Cool. It's good. <sighs> Some coffee. So, how does someone become successfully unemployed? What is up, Money Tribe? Mike the Mazel here, helping you make sense of dollars. On this video, we interviewed Dustin from Successfully Unemployed. So let's send it. So we're here with Dustin with Successfully Unemployed podcast host and real estate extraordinaire as well. So I wanted to ask you some few questions for the How You Money series. First question is, how did you start your financial journey? My financial journey started with my parents only teaching me don't get into debt. Other than that, like savings wasn't a thing, um, giving wasn't a thing, it's just don't go into credit card debt. And so when I started my journey, it was basically with zero dollars. I live paycheck to paycheck, and there's a reason why I love the acronym. J-O-B. J-O-B is just over broke. That's your job. You're living just over broke because your boss is just giving you enough money to keep you working, but not too much that takes money out of his or her pocket. So when I started realizing that I'm only getting paid for an hour and I get a dollar, however much, you know, let's say $20 an hour or whatever it might be. I work one time, I get paid one time. My financial journey when I realized that I need passive income where I work one time and I make money over and over and over again. And so what I decided to do was I started many different businesses and I had a, I had a <laughs> graphic website design company. I had a skateboard manufacturing company. I had a convenience store, a pizzeria, and I started investing in real estate. The easiest one by far, the one I did so little work but made the most money was real estate. So I bought one rental property and then I saved up money. I realized, oh my goodness, I made $350 this month without doing a thing. Let me get more of these. Like, uh, and so I just kept saving money, buying more and more and more. Eventually, even, I'll pause that because I remember we were talking about where it started. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any money. My wife had money, She a little bit of money. She came into the marriage with $10,000. She saved $10,000. Right after we got married, I said, honey, I want to take all the, your money that you saved. I want to buy a rental property. She said, no, you're not going to do that. Anyways, I talked her into it. Praise the Lord, we were able to buy the first house. Uh, we saved a little bit more money, bought that first house. But then after that, we realized how much money we can make from that one property. And we said, hey, if we just buy the next property, that'd be double or three, 10 properties. Like if you're making $250 a month from one property, 10 properties, you're making $2,500 a month. 20 properties, you're making $5,000 a month or more. So that is where we started. I bought one property and then kept buying, rolling it over. And after you know 30, 30 some properties now, I have plenty of money and I don't need to work. So I quit my J-O-B and now I'm not living J-O-B. Nice, that's awesome. With that being said, you're pretty well, pretty smart with money and everything like that. What would you say your number one money hack is with money? What's your number one money hack? So principle wise, is being frugal. That's if you're if you're thinking about like principles, frugality is is a huge for me and my family. Uh, we love being frugal, but we, and we'll get into this. But we spend our money on things that we want to spend our money on. But frugality can be a negative if you start being cheap or stingy. We love giving, and so we love being frugal, so we can do the things we want. Plus, we also love to give. But that's the principle. But a number one money hack for me was when I was working at Job. I had basically my insurance came from my job. You know, I, I pay extra money and I get insurance, employer covered health insurance. But I realized I was paying like $10,000 a year for the insurance that my job gave. And I thought, you know what? I might be able to find something better. So what I did was I dropped my employer-based health coverage, which was $10,000 a year. I got, I found a, a Christian medical sharing program that basically uh, I was paying like $180 a month as opposed to, I think it was like um, $1,000 a month. Okay. So that cut out basically $8,000 saved it in my pocket instead of paying those into the premiums. And people might say, well, you know, you might have a high deductible. So we had a high deductible. It was $10,000. But in one year I saved $8,000 and we never went to the doctor. So it's eight grand. After six years of working that job, what does that come out to? That's what, $42,000? saved, that's extra two extra properties there. That's awesome. With the personal finance space, who is some of your influences and inspiration? It really, not, not necessarily like finance, like how to manage money. Um, it was more of how to make money. So my biggest problem was making money in a different way or earning money and working a job and earning money. But for me, it was the process of making money differently. So instead of earning, I'm now making money where it didn't exist. I buy a property and with that property, I make money from that property. So the biggest influence for, from me was um, Robert Kiyosaki. 
starting with Rich Dad Poor Dad, it's a fantastic book. He said, you know, business, you want to go with passive income, you want to start businesses and real estate. I just love real estate. I didn't even know anything about real estate. I just said, you know what, I'm going to start doing it. And then I bought the first property. So Robert Kiyosaki is my first, like above all. But I also really like Dave Ramsey. But I would say I follow about 75% of what Dave Ramsey say, says and almost 100% of what Robert Kiyosaki says. Kind of blend them together yeah. because Dave Ramsey is great for 90% of the population, but there's so many people that it's like it's not enough. Like we need to make more money. So both of those two guys are, are really influential, but I really took heavily to Robert Kiyosaki. Nice. I love Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Name one thing you choose to spend extravagantly on. We love, when I say we, my wife and my four kids, we love traveling. We absolutely love traveling. So we're frugal everywhere else. Like I live in one of my rent, old rental properties in Arizona. It's 1,250 square feet. My wife and my four kids, we all live in the same house together. But we save money and we have plenty of money. But what we do is we travel. So right after I quit my job in 2016, um, I went to Boston for uh, like two weeks with my wife. Then in 2017, I went to Japan for six weeks with my wife, my four kids, and my dad. We drove for six weeks, like 2,000 miles, maybe more, around the entire island of Japan. The year after that, in 2018, we took a six-week trip throughout, throughout all of Europe, or all, but like 11 countries in Europe. So we traveled, did all that. It was a whirlwind of everything. It was fantastic. And then last year, in 2019, we went to Florida, flew from Phoenix to Florida, went to a podcast movement conference, and then drove a four-week trip all the way up to Washington, D.C., and then, yeah, and then flew from Washington, D.C. back to Phoenix, and so it was a four-week field trip with the kids. And so I have the easy job of making money through real estate. My wife has a hard job of homeschooling, and so this was a big homeschool field trip, you know, all the sightseeing and everything. So we love spending on travel. Museums and everything. That's awesome. I remember watching your stories and everything, all that. What is the best advice you ever received? It's, it's easy to say start now, but here's the thing. I love this, the quote that um, when's the best time to plant a tree? It was 20 years ago. The next best time is today. And so if you do whatever you're going to plan on doing, you want to do it, even if it's mediocre, in my opinion, even if it's mediocre, you should do it because you'll grow and you'll change. You'll get better as you go. But if you start right now in whatever you're going to do, if it's, if it's like, you know, saving money, if it's investing money, if it's starting a business, whatever it might be, if you start now, as opposed to putting it off, you're going to look back and say, you know, 20 years, years later, I'm so glad I planted that tree 20 years ago, as opposed to, man, I should have planted it back then. I should do it now. So that's my number one uh, bit of advice outside of getting passive income. Like if I were to go back and say, hey, Dustin, and little Dustin, you need to learn passive income. Get passive income as fast as possible. Outside of that is literally planning, planning that tree right now. I know you're a content creator. You have podcasts, um, courses and everything. What would you say your favorite piece of content that you've created? I would have to say, so I, I love my course. I love the, uh, uh, all my, I have a few books. I, I love all my, everything I wrote on my site. But I would have to say it's probably the podcast. And the reason why I love the podcast is because uh, it's, it helps people to say either I like Dustin and I like what he's talking about, I like how he says it and what he says, or I hate it. So if they hate it, they turn it off and they, they go away and I don't waste their time. But the podcast really helps people to think, you know, hey, I like the way Dustin is, I like his personality or you know, whatever it might be. And they stay and they realize, hey, Dustin actually knows what he's talking about. He cares about me, like I can hear in his voice or whatever it might be. So. In, in like all of the content that I, I have, it, I really love the podcast. That's really, really great because it reaches so many people. And on top of that, they get to see the personality. They get to see how much I care. That's the biggest thing. Because when you write a piece of text, if you even write, write a book, you can only express so much in words. When you're hearing somebody's passion, their personality, hearing their stories from their own words, it really, for me, grabs me when I listen to somebody else. And same thing when somebody listens to me. It's either they like it and stay or they hate it and they shut it off. Nice. And for the, these next three questions, you could just hold on to it. Who are you interested in seeing how you money? So I'm interested in people that are not frugal because I'm really frugal and I'm like, how in the world do you spend money? So I have, I have a, um, a guy in my mastermind, his name's Tom Sylvester, and he's really good at creating systems, but then also hiring people to do things that he shouldn't do so that he can focus on building the business. And so. Every single time I talk to him, he's all, Dustin, you need to pay somebody to do that. But I'm so frugal, I can do it myself and all that sort of stuff. He's, 
if you do pay somebody else to do that, that'll free up your time to do something else to make money. So he is fantastic. Um, uh, love, would love to listen to him. And what are you up to? Oh, so with, I have a, two different podcasts. One, at Master Passive Income. That's my number one podcast. My next one is Successfully Unemployed. I love having Successfully Unemployed because what I do is I interview amazing people who are normal, like us, just normal people that we just, you know, your next door neighbor. Every day. Everyday people that have quit their job with businesses, entrepreneurship, side hustles, whatever it might be, because I find that you don't have to be wealthy, you don't have to be rich, you don't have to be born with money or you know be a YouTube star or something like that. There's so many ways to make money to provide for your family rather than working a job. I mean, I've interviewed taco truck vendors, I've interviewed a lady that sells bridal gowns, I've interviewed somebody who has a gym who he was a uh, physical trainer yeah. in the gym. And the owner says, hey guys, I'm gonna close down. And the fizzle trainer's like looking around, all the people that are employees, hey guys, we're not closing, I'll buy it. And he didn't have the money, he figured it out, and he got it, and now he's, anyway, so okay. successfully employed podcast, as well as Master Passive Income, where I talk about rental properties as well. And where can people find you? So you can absolutely find me on Master Passive Income podcast or the Successfully Unemployed podcast. Both of those are great ways to find me. And my website's the successfullyunemployed.co. I couldn't buy the .com. Okay. Some guy's just sitting on it, and I'm like, oh, well. But successfullyunemployed.co, as well as masterpassiveincome.com. Awesome. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Definitely. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to gently tap that thumbs up. Sound off in the comments below what you thought. Lastly, high five that subscribe. Stay legendary and I'll see you in the next video.